All right, guys, so we got a uh, Eaton Fuller here out of a 2012 Freightliner. <clears throat> What's going on with this one? Uh, it's bleeding air out of the exhaust of the range selector manifold here uh, in high gear and in neutral. Um, so we've got the transmission removed. We're going to get this top plate off here, get it cleaned up a little bit, and I'll show you what to do to resolve that issue once we get this off. Um, like I said, we're just going to go ahead and clean this up, pull the plate off, and I'll be back with you after that. Alright guys, so we've got the uh, top cover of the transmission off. Uh, I don't want this to be too long-winded, but I do want to explain a little bit about what we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, so, I've had it happen a few times. As I said, the condition of the truck was, in neutral and high gear, it was bleeding air out of the range selector manifold this guy here okay now i've had it i've done it too where it seems like this is faulty and it's leaking out of a seal on the side here and towards the back um and i've replaced it and then it's done the same thing and then i've even gone so far as to go back to freightliner and warrant it out thinking i got a defaulty one uh and it turns out this is actually doing its job but the the problem's much deeper so to save you a bunch of heartache and embarrassment we'll go over the operation of this so here is your high low range piston how this works is it moves in and it moves out and it's a pneumatic piston meaning it's moved by air and not hydraulic fluid so when you flip up to high range your piston is going to get shot back in to this position and in order for that to happen it has to exhaust all the air out of this side of the cylinder so when you're that only allows to do it in neutral so that you can prematurely slip, select down to low gear when you pop it in neutral it goes to low gear so this guy's job is when it hits neutral it hits the exhaust and allows all the pressure in low range to exhaust out now the problem is once you start pressurizing this high side if you have a bad seal in here the pressure that's supposed to move the piston forward, even though it may be moving it forward and you may be getting high gear, is bleeding back to this side, which is an open exhaust up through your shifter and then down back to the exhaust in your manifold here. Now, the number one cause of this is rust. And if you look here, it's out of focus. Let me see if I can get this thing in focus. If you look here, you can see all this rust build up, all this grime, this grit. This here is a piston that has a, um, a molded rubber seal on it. So the seal itself can't be replaced. You have to replace the piston. But you can see, sorry, you can see all of that. All that grime, all that rust, that just plays hell on a rubber seal. Now you may not see any major tears or anything, but it's wore down and you can see if that rust and that grime is getting past that seal and then quite obviously air is getting past it as well so that's what's happening um, this kit that comes with a new piston out of focus again I'm sorry comes with a new piston comes with a new o-ring it's like 20 bucks um, this is very simple to change all you have is you have a, uh, a snap ring right in here and that pops out this whole thing will slide out of here so that you can slide this back forward this way, sorry, back forward this way. And then the number one thing to, to, to take note of is inside the cylinder here. Um, you want to make sure you get that cleaned up. Now, if you want to spend the money to go ahead and buy a whole new top plate with a new fork assembly and all of that, uh, you could do that. But um, just at very least get this cleaned up in here this is nasty and it's just going to eat up your new seal again once you replace this piston here you're just going to eat it up if you don't get that cleaned up right so yeah that's that's it these eaten fullers um i i it's i can't i've never had one before that you can actually do in the truck as you saw earlier we have the transmission removed um, so you, you're going to have to remove the transmission to do this, but it's not a bad thing either. Um, one, you can check the, uh, actual condition of the clutch, but also once we have this out, 
we noticed the fork, the fork bushings were completely gone. So it gave us an opportunity to go ahead and do that. And we didn't have to wonder later if we had an engine knock or something going on in the tranny. Um, like I said, you could check the clutch. It also gave us an opportunity to take care of a, uh, a strip drain plug. So don't be afraid. I think this is, uh, we're halfway through our day now. And we are already at this point. It's not that hard to pull the tranny out. Um, but if you have replaced this manifold here and you're still getting air leaking out of the exhaust and high range neutral, um, 90% of the time, this can be your culprit. Uh, also, there's a, another little O-ring in here on this side. You're going to have to replace that O-ring as well. Um, but the main thing is get all that rust cleaned up. Um, I hope this saves you some troubles and some heartache. Um, I know I would have liked to have had this information a while back, the first couple times I did this. Uh, that's it. Like I said, I don't want to make this too long. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. Thank you. One more thing I wanted to mention, inside here as well, once you get the piston out, once you pull this out of the front plate here, there's also an O-ring in there. So you have this O-ring, um, you have the one on the outside, you have your piston with the snap ring, and then you have another O-ring right there. And of course you have the, the, the gasket for this and the shift tower gasket. And you make sure you have all those things if you're going to do this job. So I'm not going to bore you guys with cleaning. You get the concept here. Um, this little brush set here, it's this whole set here. Um, that came from Cornwell Tools and then I'm using this little bit driver from Snap-on. Um, you obviously don't need to buy name brand stuff and you could probably find cheaper versions of it. But the point is, you can even take your time with some emery cloth or some um, just a simple wire brush. But this makes things a lot faster. You just, you really want to get all of that rust out of here. Quick update. Um, even if you do buy quality tools, yeah, wow, shit goes wrong. So I wouldn't invest too much in this. Alright guys, next update here. Um, I'm changing out the piston seal here. Uh, I've go, I went ahead and I've uh, pulled the snap ring off. Sorry, I went ahead and I pulled the snap ring off. We took the, uh, the piston off of the shaft here. <clears throat> I wanted to show you, um, as I showed you earlier, there's not much. It doesn't look like that bad, right? Okay. So looking at it, you can see those are a lot deeper grooves right here. It's one of the things I'm looking at. And right here, you can see where it's super flat spotted. That's one of the things you look for. And you might think it, it isn't even that bad, but in this comparison, I'll go ahead and show you what the piston should look like. The piston seal should look like this. And you can see how much deeper of a groove that is, how much more rubber there is there. Um, so that's what a, a one's supposed to look like. You kind of see up against the can there, how deep the grooves are versus what we pulled out. See how much flatter it is? It's wore down. Now the other thing too is um, that it's not only sealed on the outside, it's sealed on the inside. Once I pulled that loose, you can see that tear right there. Um, see how part of that seal is coming off? That was probably our main culprit right there. So it's probably bypassing on the inside rather than the outside. But as you can see, the, the outside's very much wore out compared to compared to what it should look like. Um, so even though 
even though you look at it, you'll see an obvious tear or whatever in something like this. Um, if you see that much rust build up and everything, it, it's yeah, it's bad. And with the symptoms too, especially if you know that your manifold is good, if you have those kind of symptoms, that's about the only thing I'd be bypassing through is this seal here.